Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Welcome to my video on running the Kolmogorov Smirnoff test, often referred to as the KS test in SPSS. The KS test is a test of normality and is often used to satisfy the assumptions of parametric statistics. So I have here a set of fictitious data and I have four variables. I have an ID, which is an ID number. For, this is at all the different participants. I have an independent variable uh, named group that has uh, two levels, control and CBT. And then I have scores from a pretest and scores from a post-test. So I'm going to calculate the KS statistic with these two variables. So that is done by going to Analyze, Descriptive Statistics, Explore. And then in this dialog, I'm going to move pretest over to the dependent list and post test over to the same list box here. And under Statistics, I'm going to add just outliers. So I'm going to leave the descriptives up there and add uh, outliers. So check off this box. And for plots, uh, I'm going to uncheck stem and leaf, check histogram, and then check normality plots with tests. And click continue. I'm going to leave the options the same, exclude cases list wise. So at this point, uh, you can click OK and run the analysis. And you can see there's a variety of information that's provided. You can see there's 90 cases in the post test and uh, in the pretest and in the post test. And there is uh, no cases missing from either variable. And there are plenty of descriptives listed here for both variables uh, the mean, confidence interval, median, variance, standard deviation, and so on. Uh, this can be very useful when uh, examining normality. And then you have extreme values. So it's important to recognize here that you have for each variable, you have highest and lowest values. First is the case number, and then is the actual value. So you can see the, here the highest values for pretest and the lowest, and over here the highest values for post-test and then the lowest. It's important to note here you can see uh, the little A and B and C next to these low values and it describes uh, down here what that means. It's only a partial list of the cases with the value as shown uh, in this table for, for all three of these uh, values. The 30 in the pretest and then uh, in this case the higher, right? only a partial list uh, of cases with the value of 44 shown in the upper extremes for this one and then in the lower extremes for 28. So this will help you to spot outliers in your data. And then moving to the actual uh, results of the KS test, you can see that for the pretest we have a significance of 0 0.091 and the post-test 0, .00, uh, 0 sorry. And usually that's reported as uh, less than 0 0.001. So what this uh, KS test tells us what the significance value tells us. It answers the question is this variable, for example, pretest, statistically significantly different than a normal distribution? All right, that's the test. And you could see at 0 0.091 if we have an alpha of 5%, which would be 0 0.05. In this case, we would accept the null hypothesis. The null hypothesis is there is no statistically significant difference between, uh, in this case, the pretest and a normal distribution. So we would, we would accept the null hypothesis or fail to reject the null hypothesis. Therefore, in this case, we would presume that the pretest is normally distributed. Now, the post test here uh, is a bit different. We have the less than 0 0.001, as it would be reported that is statistically significant. So there is a statistically significant difference between the post-test values and the normal distribution. So in this case, we would reject 
the null hypothesis. So we're going to reject the null hypothesis and we're going to presume there is a statistically significant difference between the post-test and the normal distribution and therefore we're going to presume that the post-test is not normally distributed. So looking at the histogram for the pretest kind of gives you an idea of how the values are distributed. And then you have a QQ plot, a few of those. And as we move down to the post-test, you can see this is the histogram for the post-test, and again the QQ plot. It's worth noting here that the Shapiro-Wilk test of normality is also calculated at the same time as the KS test and is generally considered a better statistic for determining normality. And you can see in the case of the post-test, both the KS test and the Shapiro-Wilk test generate the same result. That is, the null hypothesis is rejected. But you'll notice here for the pretest, the KS test result indicates that the pretest is normally distributed, but the Shapiro-Wilk indicates that it's not. It's close at 0 0.049. That's very close to 0 0.05, but it is less than 0 0.05. So for the KS test, we would accept the null hypothesis, but the Shapiro-Wilk, we would reject the null hypothesis. I hope you found this video on running the KS test to be useful. As always, if you have any questions or concerns, feel free to contact me, and I'll be happy to assist you.